Hey there, everybody. Do you love to travel and learn about new places? Great, then you are in the right place. Join Jasmine the cat and Gracie the tortoise as they have fun traveling the beautiful United States and learning lots of cool new facts. Hello, friends. It's Jasmine, the jazzy gray cat, here with my bestie Gracie, the super smart tortoise. Say hi, Gracie. Greetings, my good friends. Gracie here. We're still exploring England, which is part of Great Britain. Great Britain is the island that has the countries of Scotland, England, and Wales on it. Last time we visited London, the capital and largest city. London was so exciting! Oh, but now I'm tired of the hustle and bustle of the city, and now I'm excited to explore other places. Where to first? I thought we would start off with Stonehenge. It's about 88 miles south of London. We'll take the train. All aboard. Gracie, why don't you fill me in on Stonehenge as we ride? And why are we leaving so early? It's still dark out. I need my beauty sleep. It will all become clear when we get there, and you're beautiful enough without it. Now about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is in Wiltshire and is a huge man-made circle of standing stones. It's one of the world's most famous prehistoric monuments and one of its biggest mysteries, too. Ooh, I love history mysteries! People of the late Neolithic age started the stone circle about 5,000 years ago, but it took over 1,000 years to build. The enormous stones, called Saracens, are about 13 feet tall and are standing in a circle around smaller stones. But how could people thousands of years ago have moved and arranged such gigantic stones? No one is really sure, Jasmine. To give you an idea of the size and weight, the lighter blue stones weigh about 8,000 pounds, or about the same as two cars. And the massive Saracen stones weigh about 22 tons. That's as much as four elephants. Whoa! That's really heavy! How did the people get them there? I know they didn't have any tractor-trailer trucks or big equipment. Archaeologists believe that the Saracen stones were hauled to the site on big wooden sleds from about 32 miles away. But the blue stones are thought to have come from 140 miles away in Wales. Most likely, these stones floated down on a river of rafts. Those are great theories, Gracie. But how about the legend from the 12th century that says giants made the henge on a mountain in Ireland and a wizard named Merlin from the King Arthur stories magically moved the stone circle to England? It could happen. All theories must be tested, I suppose, and that's why the henge is a history mystery. Absolutely dootly, Gracie. But why was it built? The most popular idea is that Stonehenge was a calendar that helped the people know when summer was coming. Every year, on June 21st, the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year, the sun will always rise over the heelstone, and the sun always sets over the heelstone on the shortest day of the year in December. I'll bet that makes one gorgeous sunrise. It does, and that's why we're up so early. We're going to take a sunrise tour of the Henge. Ooh, that does sound fun. Worth getting up so early for. Gracie, this is magnificent. The stones are so tall and majestic. The circle looks like it was made out of building blocks. You know, when you set blocks up tall in a circle and then lay down blocks on top of them to connect the circle. Ooh, the sunrise is coming. It is a breathtakingly magical sight. I can feel the spirits of the people from long ago as we admire and wonder about their marvelous creation. Before we head north, let's go and visit the White Cliffs of Dover in, where else, Dover. That sounds great, Gracie. Why are the cliffs white? They're white because they're made out of chalk. Like the kind we use when we draw on the sidewalk? Absolutely correct. These cliffs are up to 360 feet high and are over 70 million years old. Oh, they are beautiful. Let's walk on them. I want to look for blue butterflies, peregrine falcons, and maybe even a bluebird. Quiet, Jazzy. I see some blue butterflies over there. 
Oh, over there on that branch, a bluebird. He's so cheeky looking. The cliff that we're on right now is called Shakespeare Cliff, after William Shakespeare. William who? William Shakespeare. He lived over 400 years ago and is thought to be one of the world's greatest playwrights. Some of his famous plays are Hamlet, Midsummer's Night Dream, and Romeo and Juliet. Wait a minute! I saw the movie Romeo and Juliet. That sounds like Romeo and Juliet. Yes, the movie is based on the play Romeo and Juliet. Cool! It's super windy on these cliffs. Let's fly this butterfly kite. Help me hold it tight. It really is flying high. I can see a lighthouse, and on our way back, let's look for Dover Castle. Over there! I see it! I wish we had more castles in the United States. I want to live in one. But since we can't live in one, let's go to Windsor Castle. It was Queen Elizabeth II's favorite castle. Excellent choice, Jasmine. Kings and queens have lived in it for over 1,000 years. William the Conqueror first built a Norman castle near the royal hunting forest, but King Edward III in the 14th century made it into a Gothic palace fit for a king. Or a queen. We can go into the rooms that were used by Charles II. I would love to visit the rooms the royal family uses now, but I get it. Who wants people in their private places? Not me. That's true, but there will be enough fancy things for even you, Jasmine. Follow me up the grand staircase. As we go, look at all the suits of armor, cannons, drums, and swords. Gracie, this is so me. Check out the grand reception room where the queen used to meet her guests. It's so sparkly. Look at all the stuff that's covered with gold and the huge chandeliers are dazzling and those sofas are far too jazzy to sit on. I definitely need one of those sofas. Wow, wow, wow. Step into the queen's guard chamber. What do you think of this sword? Are those diamonds on the hill? Yes, they are. It was bought by King Charles IV. He didn't have enough diamonds on it, so he added several hundred more. Gracie, we could see the changing of the guard here, just like at Buckingham Palace, but I want to see Queen Mary's dollhouse. Gosh, it's enormous. This dollhouse is the largest and most beautiful dollhouse in the world, but it's not a toy. It was made in 1924 because Queen Mary loved collecting miniature objects. It even has running water and flushing toilets and working electricity. Too bad we can't play with it, because look at all that cool stuff inside. Crystal chandeliers, thrones, silver plates on the dining room table, and miniature jewel crowns. And the wind-up gramophone plays God Save the King. And there are teeny tiny copies of books by famous authors. I would love to have something like this at home. It would be fun to play with. How about we finish up by climbing up the round tower? It has only 200 steps and we will have the most impressive views over the castle and the whole of Windsor. Great idea! Race you! I can see why Queen Elizabeth II loved it here. I do, too. I knew you would enjoy this stop. Now we're heading to the Lake District. Can you guess why it's called the Lake District? Hmm, let me think. Because there are lots of lakes? Correct. You are so smart. The Lake District is here in Cumbria, northwest England. It covers 885 square miles and has many lakes and over 100 mountain peaks. I see Windermere Lake, the longest lake in England, and Scaffold Pike, the highest mountain in England. England is a very rainy place, but the Lake District is the wettest place in the country, with some places getting about 11.5 feet of rain a year. So it's a good thing I have my bumper shoot in my boots. Remember? Bumper shoot means umbrella. I just love that word. You are always prepared for anything, Jasmine. The lakes weren't always here. 500 million years ago, the Lake District was an area of volcanoes. More recently, only 12,000 years ago, during the last ice age, enormous rivers of ice or glaciers covered the land. These glaciers created the lakes that are here today. Cool info as always, Gracie. I'm going to be on the lookout for the red squirrel. This is one of the only places where it still lives. 
Or maybe I will find the sundew, an insect-eating plant. A red squirrel sighting is rare and would be nice to see. The Lake District is also known for the writers and artists who lived here. One you might be familiar with is Beatrix Potter. The creator of the Peter Rabbit stories? You betcha! Peter is not a good listener and gets into trouble with Farmer McGregor. I also like the story of Two Bad Mice, where the mice go into the dollhouse. I would love to visit Beatrix Potter's farm, Hilltop, in the village of Sorry. Although, I heard she didn't live here. She lived nearby a castle cottage with her husband. That's right, but Beatrix wrote some of her stories here and filled Hilltop with her special things. Shall we start in the garden? Oh, yes. Look at the pretty roses around the door, and I can smell the lavender. Mmm. I can almost see hedgehogs and Peter Rabbit snuffling around. I think Peter would be here over by the vegetables. I would love to try some of the delicious strawberries, raspberries, and gooseberries that are growing. I'm sure Peter would have eaten them, too. Over here! I found a secret door in the hedge. Just right for Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Oh, Gracie, this place is magical. It most certainly is. I am so glad we came. England is so much fun, but now I'm ready to go to Scotland. How about we tell rabbit jokes on the train? Here's mine. Gracie, how do rabbits travel? I think I know this one. By airplane. Yup, that's it. Your turn. I think I will stump you, Jazzy. What's a bunny's motto? Nice try, Gracie, but it's be hoppy. I should have known I can't stump you. Nope. My favorite place was visiting Beatrix Potter's house in the Lake District. I liked looking for hedgehogs. How about you? I enjoyed the mystery history of Stonehenge. How about you, friends? What was your favorite place? Don't forget to tell someone you love all about it. That's right, and come back next time for Scotland. Bye now, or cheerio, as they say here in England. Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, my dear friends. See you next time. Cheerio. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Jasmine and Gracie on their adventure today. Come back next week for the next one. Hello, everybody. It's Gwen here. If you want to know more about the places we visited, just go to our website, jasmineandgracie.podbean.com, and go to the sources page, and you can find out all about the great places that we visited. See you next week. Bye-bye.